Richard Garfinkel is a Chicago-based science fiction writer and computer programmer of whom the most shocking and controversial thing one can say is that he wrote an essay called Why Killing Harry Potter is the Worst Outcome for Voldemort for a mapping the world of Harry Potter science fiction and fantasy writers explore the best-selling series of all time back in 2006. Ten years prior, he published a little book called Celestial Matters, one of the best books I've ever read, and that's coming from someone who, as a rule, doesn't read much science fiction. Overall, this is a most unusual work of fantastic sci-fi, where the author takes a very out-there premise and goes all the way with it. The time is roughly the equivalent of about 600 AD. A Greek military engineer named Aeus of Tyre sets off on the Sun Thief, a ship carved out from floating moon rock on a secret mission to use a specially crafted net to rip out a bit of the sun and drop it on the capital of China to end a several centuries long war between the Delian League and the Middle Kingdom. The novel takes place in an alternate universe where Alexander the Great sided with the League against his father Philip of Macedon. Oh, and also the Earth is the centre and only stationary object in the universe, around which all other planets revolve, put into motion by the command of the Prime Mover, with the stars just being lights permanently fixed in the heavens. The characters are interesting and varied from the main character, the respectable and uh, resourceful scientist Aes of Tyre, to the no-nonsense female Spartan Cherokee, yes, yellow hair, the incompetent fool of a would-be military commander Anaximander, to the scientist Ramon Ojon, an Indian and covert Buddhist at a time where the pacifist ideology is proscribed by both sides of the war. Not only cosmology follows the Greek model, animals are reared by genetically spontaneously being formed in vats out of nothing without parentage. Medicine is based around balancing the four humours, there are steam-powered spaceships, and people routinely get direct divine revelations from the Olympian gods themselves to give them counsel. It is by far the most imaginative story I've properly ever read, with the sci-fi quote-unquote title being nothing more than a label, since the science here presented is so alien and so contrary to all we know of the workings of our universe that it takes a high level of imagination in order to get into the headspace necessary where it sort of starts making a limited kind of sense. It definitely takes a highly skilled and ambitious writer to start off with having to come up with an entirely new set of physical laws for their book as step one and then having to treat them as normal as we do our own physical laws, it explains them well enough to where it, on one side, doesn't seem like an info dump, but also does not leave the readers utterly confused. And Garfinkel does this perfectly, and this is all the more surprising that this level of competence is just so unusual and unexpected in well, the work of this scope for a writer for whom this was his very first novel. Among Garfinkel's subsequent works, there is uh, all of an instant, which seems to take a more different approach than normal to the concept of time travel, which uh, merits future examination. But, though thus far, nothing Garfinkel's written has uh, generated quite as much buzz as did Celestial Matters.